another week slogging away down the docks. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying I'm special or anything. Lots of men, hundreds of men in Cardiff are in the same boat as me. We has jobs, but they're exhausting. Me, I'm grateful for my job, I am. It puts money in my pocket, food on a table, shoes on my kids' feet. But I work sad. A lot of shifting and lifting and carrying. Dangerous too. If any of that cargo slips, you'd be done in. Make no mistake, it's tough. It's dangerous and it's unending. Ships in, ships out. Every day. We have to load and unload everything in fear of damaging ourselves and being unable to work. So when we have a day off, we want to make the most of it. And like the rest of you, I enjoy my beer. Who doesn't? So why is it that we're here now? Why is it that I'm reduced to hiding in this tiny illegal drinking den? This shabine with a tankard having a sly beer that only a select few knows about. They banned it. They robbed us. Robbed us of the one pleasure that we had to look forward to on a weekend. Gladstone and that traitor to his own grace, Lloyd George. They cooked up a ridiculous scheme banning Sunday drinking. Only in Wales, mind you. One law for the Welsh and another for the bloody English. The Sunday closing act. <laughs> a victory for Wales and for Welshness, some calls it. I calls it a bloody travesty. All of a sudden, the working man was denied the simplest of pleasures on the one day he could truly relax. So we looked for alternatives, for ways round the law, ways to beat the system. For example, if you were like a, a traveller, a passenger, you could buy a beer. So we bought rail tickets to Penarth on a Sunday to qualify for a beer in the hotel. Then they found out and they stamped down on that. They wanted us in chapel, not out having fun, but a dry grange town every Sunday is nobody's idea of fun. They told us we could use the working man's club or the bracci, but it was temperance bars only on a Sabbath. And the thing is, the men of Grangetown, well they are, um, how should I say this? Creative when needs arise. We have a certain ability to interpret things in our favour. But not everyone is of the same opinion. Then again, not everyone has to sweat for a living. For some, a Sunday is the principal day of the week to show the world who they are. Well, might Solomon say of this wine cup, as the typical embodiment of all intemperance, at the last it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. More horrible are the crushing folds of this demon drink than the anaconda. More venomous its tooth than the fatal fang of the asp that sucked the boiling blood out of Cleopatra. More fascinating the power of the fiend that makes his home on the ruby wavelet of the festive glass than the spell-fought glare of the basilisk's eye. Drink robs a man of his noblest faculties. Drink dissolves the pearl of peace with a corrosive potency, more than the acid draught of the Egyptian queen. Drink shuts out God and his mercy. Drink hurls its victim into a chasm of utter degradation. Man is physically ruined by intemperance. No, I don't know what a basilisk eye is either. I was going to ask when he started, but then I just lost interest. But that's what we hear day in, day out from our chapels and churches down here in Grangetown. By divine assistance, I will abstain from all the intoxicating drinks as beverages and discountenance all the causes and practices of intemperance. Lips that have touched alcohol shall never touch these lips. Eliza Jones had nothing to worry about. No one was rushing to kiss a 46-year-old spinster. Even a drunk has standards. But there were a huge numbers of people who took a similar pledge of temperance in and around Cardiff, though. Those of us that worked on the docks felt that we needed a little relief from our work. And for most of us, Sunday's the only day we can get it. Lloyd Bloody George chose to interfere with our God-given rights. Is he even properly Welsh? 
you ask me, Jesus and his friends love to drink. The Bible's full of stories about wine. But those in Westminster think they know what's best for us men of the Grange. Yeah, Daniel, what have you been thinking? Careful, John, dangerous that is. Oh, very funny. Look, I split my sides. Look, is it, uh, it's only pubs that are closed on a Sunday, right? Agreed. Well, pubs and the sale of alcohol. But if we belong to one of those gentlemen's clubs, we could carry on drinking on a Sunday as long as we don't buy the beer that day. John fancied himself as a gentleman, but he was a working man just like me. You may be right, John, but no self-respecting club would let the likes of us join. They're all about coal merchants and ship owners and that. But what if... What if we formed our own gentlemen's club? So you want us to, to, to own our own club? We've barely got two pennies to rub together. I had an idea. As long as we're walled in, it's a club. So you could go to the field at the mall, dig a pit, and we could do it in there. Big walls! Next thing I know, you'll be laying carpets and employing waiters. Carpets not a bad idea. I got that big rug. We can use that. All we need to do is buy a barrel of beer on a Saturday, take it down the mall on a Sunday, and we can drink to our heart's content and no one can stop us. And that is literally how we began. We'd already tried loads of ways to beat the system, tried to avoid the full force of the law. We tried every harebrained scheme and failed. But this one, this one was ours. Our club soon became known as the Hotel de Mao, a private invitation only club. It became so popular that hundreds were invited and began to drink and to gather together on the Mall every Sunday. There they were, being merry and sticking two fingers up at the authorities. There were all sorts of offshoots, such as the Hotel de Miners and the Hotel de Boilermakers. The authorities weren't going to take it lying down, though. This is an outrage. Who do these commoners think they are? Do they realise that the Mall is my land? I shall not countenance such proclivity for intemperance in my jurisdiction. Any person caught drinking at one of these gatherings shall be prosecuted with the full force of the law as trespassers. That's an end to it. I don't know what the Marquis of Buke was mad about. Was he mad that it was happening or mad that his land was being used and he wouldn't see a penny from it? One thing's for certain. He could have a beer any day of the week. He wasn't a working man. Any of the traditional gentlemen's clubs in St Mary Street would welcome him with open arms. At the height of the hotel's popularity, it is said that we could get through 14 barrels of beer every 10 minutes on the mall. Then if we ran out, we'd send the wife out with the pram. She'd find another barrel and smuggle the baby past the police. But then there came a legal challenge. We thought that the rich and the noble had it all sewn up, and even the pubs had complained. But the magistrates flew in the face of authority. They said, We find in favour of the defendants. These clubs are of a rude and elementary type, but still a club. They are as much as the best and most exclusive club in the country. Suddenly, the genie was out the bottle. An undercover reporter from the Western Mail reckoned 3,000 people were drinking on a Sunday, that there was over 450 shabines in Cardiff. Pubs protested that illegal drinking was killing their trade. Once people visited a shabine on a Sunday, they said they didn't visit the real pubs during the week. We used to get bigger and bigger crowds every Sunday. The area gained national notoriety because even the London papers was reporting us. Pits were dug deep in a mile's clay. Every Sunday, at least 400 men just sat around drinking freely from morning till night. Nothing was sold. 
club members just made donations. Pennies thrown in by anyone who wanted a drink. Romans 14 verse 12 is unequivocal. It is not good not to drink wine nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth or is offended or is made weak. What impact is this lawlessness having on the children and young people of our town? Do we want to change the name of the Lord's Day from Sunday to Sin Day? We cannot and must not tolerate these actions. Proverbs 1 verse 10 also implores believers that if sinners entice thou, consent thou not. But he was quite hard to hear the voice of the chapel from inside the walls of the Hotel de Mal. His mate, Canon Thompson, continued to attack us. Eventually, Lord Windsor simply banned drinking on the property. They conspired to rid the Grange of illegal activities. As is always the case, though, all good things must come to an end. After months of Sunday drinking, dodging the authorities, bending the law, we was forced off the mile by the police. The hotels were no more. The party was over. Now they've got their law from Parliament. We still have shabines. <laughs> when we try, we can fit 50 people in a front room, you know. Wander around the Grange any Sunday and you'll find us. Just listen out. Knock four times and tell them Daniel sent you. This party's not over. They can take our Sunday drinking, but they'll never take our beers.